The Way of the Drunken Master is about taking a class that is all about control and making it appear to be chaos. I talked to Mike Merles about this new subclass appearing in Xanthar's Guide to Everything. Why did you guys decide to tackle The Way of the Drunken Master? Like, what does this bring? <laughs> so, the why is very simple. People ask for it. <laughs> when we asked, like, you know, looking back for the surveys and the research we've done, that people really wanted to play Drunken Masters. And um, I like to say this was like the product of careful deliberation and, you know. No, what turned out was people really didn't like some of the other uh, monk subclasses we had worked up. And we're like, well, we kind of want to do another one, but it's kind of late in the process. Well, okay, people really want the Drunken Master, so why don't we make that one? Um, and <laughs> so, and that's kind of where it came from. And you know, it's a good example of something where I, as a designer, made like Drunken Master may not have been my first choice for a monk, but um, will the people, right? If that's what users want, then what's we're gonna why would why play coy, right? We're gonna give you what you want to play because it's your freaking game. So, but it was one of the things where it was really fun once you dive into it, and it's and it's it's a good excuse to go rewatch the Jackie Chan movies, right? Because. Uh, who doesn't want to watch a Jackie Chan movie for work, right? So, but no, wait, no, no air quotes. It was work because we had to watch it to understand why do people want us to do a Drunken Master? Well, let's go watch the movies that most people would associate with. That's what a Drunken Master is. And, you know, they're, they're fun flicks. Hadn't seen it in ages. Um, and so it was kind of nice going back and rewatching it and going, oh, okay, now I kind of remember, I get it. Um, the idea of the Drunken Master being, the, the he's like pesky, right? Like you never know where he's going to go next, right? And it's not about... You know, it's very easy to see Drunken Master, okay, you get really drunk and stumble around. Like, well, no, that's not it. The idea is it's you're unpredictable, right? That's what kind of like, in terms of fighting style, makes drunken boxing or whatever, you know, the, the term is used to describe it, a, a daunting because, you know, it's like, it's like trying to hit a, um, a knuckleball. Right, in professional baseball, the knuckleball, when you watch someone throw a knuckleball, like it, it's, it's not a 100 mile an hour pitch, it's, it's slow. You think anyone should be able to hit that. But as it comes, like, you know, and the old saying is, a knuckleball pitcher does not know where the ball is going to go, but neither does the hitter. So that's the advantage, right? Uh, there's no chess game here. It's just pure chance. And if you're a good knuckleball pitcher, your knuckleball is more unpredictable and more uncontrollable, yet still landing somewhere within the strike zone. And so that, to me, was the feeling of the drunken master. Chaos, yet controlled chaos within the bounds of what you want to do. And so that's why we wanted to come, this, come up with this idea of the drunken master being very pe uh, pesky, that he comes up, he flurries, and then he just kind of staggers away, and you don't get your opportunity attacks, um, that he's fast and mobile, very hard to pin down. He does really vexing things, like you go in and you think you're going to hit him, and no, he actually made you hit your friend. Because, you're, and again, the idea of trying to get this idea that it's, it's frustrating, like you're, you're making, maybe making a reckless swing, maybe the ogre, maybe the, the normally calm, cool, collected, lawful, evil anti-paladin is just gets so frustrated, he just swings wildly and accidentally hits the, the you know the cleric of bane next to him, right? Things like that, and so really giving players this idea to feel a little mischievous, you know. And I'm sure someone out there is going to play a tabaxi drunken master just to like maximize you know the chaos they can bring to a game. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so making that really, and we did not want to have a mechanic, you know. And I and I this is definitely a way you could have gone and say, you got to get drunk to play this character. Like no, we didn't want to do that. We wanted to really focus more on the spirit of it, the style. That knuckleball monk. You know, and the funny thing is, it just goes to show the wisdom, you know, the wisdom of the crowds, right? People, hey, we want to play Drunken Masters, and like, it was a very popular concept, and the playtest was very positive. People were really happy to see it, you know, the way it turned out. And I think it shows, I think people who were saying, I want to play a Drunken Master, like, they were very much like, I've seen the movie, I want to play this kind of pesky, unpredictable monk. And I think it's another fun thing, because it's very counter to what the traditional view of a monk would be. You know, the serene, contemplative master. Uh, versus this is no, it's kind of a fun, more chaotic character. And I always like characters, you know, a subclass that plays against type for a character class, but still makes sense, That that's fun. I, I very vividly remember playing, if you played Hearthstone, the online card game, uh, the Paladin class has a secret that's when you take damage, you do the same amount of damage to an enemy. And I was playing against someone who's playing a Yogg deck. Yogg is this, Yogg, so I thought, whatever, I can't remember the character, the monster's name. It triggers a bajillion random effects. And I had that secret up. And that was one of the most satisfying, I think I actually captured the clip of, you know, he throws in, it's all these crazy, he's, you know, he's, he's, this guy's gonna win, right? Cause nope, I had the secret surprise and that 10 damage spell you hit me with actually, re yes, it, it, it reflects back to you and it, it el eliminated the other player. I had like 12 uh, life left, he had eight. And so killed himself. And that was 
strangely not yeah, strangely no, satisfying. That's satisfying. Right? Like yeah. when you feel like someone's throwing their big attack at you, and you just redirect it back at them. Uh, that that's fun, right? Now, that's it, sometimes it, the best stories, though, right yeah. there is like you're not you're not great at what you're doing, but you are enough to yeah. ruin someone's day. Now the trick is, it's it's it, it, there's a reason though why the drunken master in, in the game you use key to do that because it does it is very powerful. It's one of those things where people really underestimate how good that is because I'm getting you to expend a resource and using it to hurt you. That's super useful. Like if I can ever make you hurt yourself in a competitive game or like in a fight, uh, that, I mean, that's why, I mean, it, you just look at an actual fighting styles, right? Like one of the, uh, you know, this entire like judo Aikido is based on that idea of like, I use your momentum against you to put you in a throw or put you in a lock. And that's, you know, that, that's how someone who is nowhere near as strong can overcome someone who's much more physically powerful because I'm going to turn your strength against you. And so in games, you have a very similar thing. You're spending resources, but then you're falling. You're spending resources to fall further behind in this sort of race to victory. So you do have to be very careful with mechanics like that, but they're super satisfying when you can make them work. The Monk, Way of the Drunken Master, appears in Xanthar's Guide to Everything. You can purchase that book on dndbeyond.com and earn pre-order bonuses as well by clicking on the link in this video description. I'm Todd Kenrick. Thanks for watching.